All right, welcome everyone to Vulcan Deckmasters Week 2, Day 2. Casting with me, Frodan, is uh, that's kind of uh, the first time we actually cast together, as far as I know. Yeah, that's right. I've been watching you cast. In fact, you just finished Star Ladder. I was watching you cast with Lothar pretty well, and good job. And now you get to cast with me, so it's a little bit of a downgrade, unfortunately, in terms of the aesthetics, but hopefully you can, you can deal with that for a few hours. I've heard of your benching exploits, so you know what? I think, <laughs> I, I think, I think we'll go with that. So today's going to be a pretty crazy day again. Um, I mean, we have a, like an, an entire month of leagues. Uh, so far, I, I'd say some of the players that I've seen win in this league have been a bit of a surprise. I mean, I, I didn't know anything about Surrender, but he's just been powering through everything. Have you heard of him before? Yeah, I've watched Surrender for many months now, um, just doing other stuff in Korea, like the OGN League, where he was able to win that. That was an awesome accomplishment. And then you also had Surrender do well at WCA, la or WEC, excuse me, I get the Chinese leagues sometimes confused. Uh, WEC last year, Surrender was one of the few players going really far in the tournament, despite that China was starting to really turn around as a region. Uh, Tides of Time ultimately took that tournament, but Surrender also left an impression as well. Yeah, so basically, you knew about the players, I just didn't follow the Asian Hearthstone scene, so as a result, I guess, I had no insight, but he's been just doing insanely well. Like, he's yeah, well, currently I mean, undefeated in the tournament at this point. Yeah, that's the whole point. Like, the fact is, you're starting to learn some of these players who have been working pretty hard. You, you see some of the familiar faces for a long time, you know, we know Kalento, Forsen, Amaz, all of them have been playing Hearthstone for so long that you've gotten familiar with them, but then you forget that there's also a good batch of players who are also trying to make a name for themselves, and they're, they're doing pretty well, too. Yeah. Apparently, the game's already underway. Bunny Muffins versus Stilo. Bunny Muffin's a really good ladder player. Probably you would have met him um, if you've played a high ladder. He has been doing mm -hmm. pretty well there, but tournament-wise, so far in the Vulcan League, not so much. He's 0-2 at the moment, as far as I know. So, quite frankly, he's got a little bit of work ahead of him, but Stilo might prove uh, a little difficult to defeat as well. Yeah, both these, uh, I mean, Bunny Muffins has been qualifying for a lot of events, even back for Gfinity a few months ago. So he's he's really been trying hard. He's also really young, like 17 or 18 years old. So this is an opportunity for him to continue to build a name because I feel like every time I talk to Bunny Muffins, which is, you know, once every couple of weeks, it's always about him moaning about how his, his tournament record is really poor. Every time he qualifies for an event, he loses in the first round or so. And yeah. so he, he actually has like an, an atrocious win rate. Um, and now it looks like he's going to be playing more of an aggressive paladin. The divine favor is the one that indicates that he wants to dump his hand and refill it very quickly. Uh, but he also has a pretty slow start here. The fact is the, the Warlock player has gotten to a board control state early on, and it took Bunny Muffins a coin consecration to clear the board. So this is looking pretty good so far for Stilo. Yeah, the, the, one of the things that's really awkward when you're playing that Divine Favor deck is when you're facing other aggressive decks, because sometimes you can race them and it's not that hard. The problem is Divine Favor is your sole draw engine. Like against Zoo, who just stabs all the time to get their, their cards, you're going to be forced to dump your hand very fast. And with a, you know, Blessing of Kings and Cog Hammer in hand, that's not happening. Uh, at least not for a bit. Yeah, you can't really afford to try and play so much board either. Um, you do yeah. sometimes have maybe one equality if you're. Depends on the tech of like what people feel like is really powerful in the metagame. But you really try to leverage things like this Divine Shield. So when Blessing of Kings comes down, it, it usually is hard for your opponent to remove. Uh, but in this case, he does have a lot of ways to buff. You can bu he can pop the shield pretty easily with a 1-1. One, one. So even though Bunny Muffins is really leaning over towards a Blessing of Kings on a Divine Shield as the ideal target, it might not even be that effective. He's going to ultimately have to draw a lot of his chargers Maybe if he has Leroy or if he has the Wolf Riders, the Arcane Golem, he's going to have to rely on that damage to finish. Because if he continues to play this board control game, which is what he's indicating he wants to go towards, it might not work out in his favor because with Void Callers and drawing like a big demon in the next couple of turns, then he controls the board. And what do you do if you're Bunny Muffins? Yeah, it, the Zoo is pretty much like the best board control slash aggro deck when you put them together, right? Like, it's not an aggressive deck the way that, you know, Face Hunter might be, or even Aggro Pally. Um, they've got sometimes, as you said, the Divine Shields, which will give them the board advantage, but very often they're super weak. As soon as they lose that momentum, they can't get it back, whereas Zoo, through life taps, can do it against other aggressive decks. Yeah, that's a really excellent point. It's the fact that they're able to go so fast, but they maintain the board control. They're not... And they also retain flexibility to be aggressive now that they're playing a lot of power overwhelmings to synergize with all the death rattles and void terrors. Check this out. A knife oh, juggle man. off the top, and there's two haunted creepers that will be able to be popped. So that's a lot of juggles that's going to be coming out this turn. Put this apple on 
I mean, that divine shield will have to be answered anyway. Like, it's very easy. Like, it looks like it's difficult. Bunny muffins might feel like that shield in but is hidden behind something somewhat relevant, but it's not. With power of whelming and the abusive and the void terror being able to consume a buff if one comes down, I don't think that uh, Ooh. that shield of mini buff. Whoa, that's the. Is that the best outcome? It's it's a little awkward because you were anticipating the divine shield being popped before um, you would have to trade in, like say the second haunted creeper. Yeah. But it's still still not the worst outcome because you know you can guarantee kill it. Your opponent already used a consecration. He's down to two cards, so you can put the the void caller in, summon out the void terror. Maybe even if you get the juggle, you can toss in the abusive sergeant instead, and then get the kill there, and you can save power overwhelming. Oh man, that is so unfortunate. Had to lose the void terror yeah. value off of this just to kill a six six. Well, you know what, bunny muffins. Needs to pick up a second Consecration here, otherwise this board is going to be pretty tough. Although he could push phase, like a Charger, as you said, would probably do uh, a lot of work for him. Oh, wow. Yeah, that Argent Protector, though, is more of the board control. Like, you just want to be able to protect you, your big Charger minions and force your opponent to double dip damage, especially if they're playing Druid. Um, yeah. Going phase seems to be your best option, but look at what his situation is. He can't even utilize Divine Favor effectively, so he's going to have to just cross his eyes, and I think he's going to have to attack phase here. Um, the, what, what's really nice is that if he, his opponent draws something like Defender of Argus, he can't actually s play it because there's too many minions on there. Yeah, board. would you ever just go face and pass the turn to see where that leads you? Instead of playing stuff and letting him replenish the board with possible taunts. I mean, you've seen two Voidwalkers, there's a Defender of Argus, at the very least one. Um, so it's That's really a really good question. And it's hard to answer it because your opponent's at 6 health. And you most likely won't see him tap because it brings him to 4, and that's true silver right. champion damage range. When do you so get? the only yeah. outs would be Leroy, and then maybe if he plays Hammer of Wrath into a Charger or another weapon. Yeah, like you have, I don't think he's running Wolf Riders. Arcane Golems possibly, and he's going to go for the pass, not letting his opponent play Defensive Argus on the board. Well, that's a pretty honest play and a very hopeful one, to be honest. That's about what it is. That's right, and this is only one draw that he has because his opponent can definitely kill him next turn. There's no way he's playing things like Lay on Hands. And Bunny Muffins That's it. not picking up what he needed. It's going to concede the first game to Stilo. Again, Bunny Muffins, as you said, getting really tough tournament records. Losing to Stilo in his first game. It's a best of three conquest format. The lineup of both players is... Uh, I mean, the Bunny Muffins is playing Paladin, Hunter, Warrior. His Warrior's out, obviously. Some people don't want to face off against the uh, patron shenanigans. And Stilo is playing Hunter, Mage, Warlock. Um, his Hunter's banned by Bunny Muffins. So he's going to have to go up against the Mage from Stilo. Yeah, now I, I do like the choice of Paladin, especially the aggressive Paladin. I think it's I think it's awesome if you're trying to set up an uh, aggressive lineup in general. Because, you know, why, why stop at one Hunter Noxious when you can play a lot of face decks and kind of have another <laughs> version of Face Hunter, right? Where you have Wolf yeah. Riders. Because if you're going to go ahead and cast your dignity out into the wind, just go all for it. So I actually like Aggro Paladin nowadays because I think it's a really good way to continue the punishment on certain types of decks. If you're really right. anticipating your opponent being weak to aggro because they're being too greedy, or if they're if you're trying to rush, like say the Patron Warriors because they you take they take too much pressure damage, I like bringing the Aggro Paladin. So I don't fault Bunny Muffins for bringing this tournament or bringing the deck to the tournament, uh, but yet it still has to work out for him. Yeah, it's one of those things where I, I think it confirms that we're going to get an Orc Paladin alternate portrait very soon. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. All right, so no, taking a, a look at uh, this Mage versus the Hunter game, technically speaking, if the Mage draws out pretty well, which you do have two Mana Worms early on, uh, it's supposed to have a really strong advantage over Hunter because you're able to out-tempo them. You have really good, powerful plays on the board. But this is not really a good start outside of the first couple of turns here. Yeah, uh, double mana worm is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things. I, I don't know. I'm. I feel like. I feel like it's mostly a coin flip matchup wise. Yeah, like Mad Scientist really even out the early tempo that the mage tends to get. I guess it's... Wow, is that really a four skill command on a one drop? But then again, he's got no four drop here. He's gonna have to top deck an answer. Yeah, and he didn't have enough mana to Kodo either. Oh, this is really unfortunate. No play again. Yeah. And you were even bringing this up in your cast with Lothar. Just like the Temple Mage is supposed to continue to play stuff on board. And I mean, you lose so much Temple, then what's the point? You're now just playing, you're trying to play Value Mage at this point. Yeah. <clears throat> and you're going to have to catch up through big plays. So, I don't think sacrificing the Drake here. Uh, do you think it's better? I, I'm not sure about that. I, I'm not convinced. I think it's okay because 
you're really trying to fight back for the board, and you do have powerful tempo plays in the next couple turns because you can squeeze it in. The thing what I don't like about this play is that your still opponent, your opponent can still capture the board, and then you're in an even more awkward position if he has Eagle Horn Bow. Or like, you know, for example, playing this high main is still a really big problem because you fireball it and you're not really developing too much of the board. Hmm. Although what, what it does allow you to do is that if you pick up a cheap minion, you're able to finally leverage it and push for it. He's going to yeah. instead just let this high main dominate the board. I, I think uh, the plays that still has to do here is basically go face. You remember the old aggro mage? Like people used to play jugglers with mirror image and mm -hmm. like the Fishu. I remember him playing that at BlizzCon if I recall. He was playing the full on yeah. aggro mage and once it runs out of steam you're hoping for top decks and that's pretty much the situation that uh, Steel is in here. He has to get those top decks. He has to find the burst, the burn damage effectively. That's really interesting that bunny muffins end up killing the the Yeti, not only making his high main really weak, but he's giving his opponent a spell and chose to freezing trap the Sorcerer's Apprentice, which gains benefit off of cheap spells. Why, why do you think he wants to go for that trade when he's setting up the freezing trap anyways? I, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a weird play because it's actually just, you know, as you said, losing the high main, but it's developing possibly one of the two twos that are going to become four fours as a result of Houndmaster. So he doesn't really mind losing that six one, I don't think. Okay. Okay. I don't think uh, it's that bad, because then he can diversify his assets, right? He gets two two twos instead of one uh, sure, big minion yeah. that dies, so. Oh man, double fireball here. Stilo picking up some burn. That's going to be pretty close to lethal, but not exactly it. He can kill off this Antonitis. Has to, and, yeah. and now it's um, a race, essentially. You know your opponent picked up fireballs. Uh, you also know he's been holding cards and making really awkward plays because he played the Sorcerer's Apprentice and he hesitated. So it seemed like uh, on that turn there was multiple things to do. So he could anticipate his opponent having more burn. Yeah, I mean, the Frost Bolts would make sense. You could expect, as you said, a little bit more arcane missiles, perhaps. Now, I'm getting flashback of Tavern Brawl this week. It's just that the Sorcerer's Apprentice is costing a bit too much. Like, he can't really even use it at this point. He's going to have to hope that the Drake lives, which it just won't. I don't see it. Uh, he's going to have to oh, pick up that, another uh, Frost Bolt. Is that what you're doing? You're playing Mage and Tavern Brawl, Noxious? I thought no, you were. I, I was doing the very. I was playing like Giant that. Shaman, man. Giant Shaman just. I, I didn't lose a game to Mage. So, you know. Giant what? Shaman. <laughs> yeah. oh, only in your stream, man. Only in your stream. You know, this is also a really okay move to do to just try to push for damage even if you recognize that your opponent has oh wait he's dead okay oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay okay, okay. I, I really thought he was not gonna trade the arrow uh, tricked me but uh -huh. yeah. all right well you know it's kind of uh, it's kind of weird because you i would expect bunny muffins to have blazed the shredders uh, properly it's kind of, it's a minor play really that a lot of people do point out especially when you're casting i think it's easier uh, to notice than when you're playing the game but he's such high level player that i find it odd Oh. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate too. Being able to snipe off the patient assassin. Bunny Muffins He's shaking his head. Kind of acknowledging, you know, not really happy with some of the, the outcomes of this. But again, he now he can really take control of the board. He's got this Kodo onto an, a very easy snipe onto one of the two attack minions. You gotta be uh, he has to be careful because of mere entity though. Hmm. Yeah, and the way it works is that it will give the Kodo to the opponent if it kills a mad scientist. Well, you still can answer it. Yeah. I mean, one of the fireballs is gone, so I guess you're not too worried at this point. Oh, wow, nice hit. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be too worried at this point. Now he can probably win the race from here on out. He certainly will, because his opponent's essentially on his last turn. Uh, he needs to have miracle plays to happen. Yeah, somebody in competitive HS was actually mentioning this. Like, you can play Frost Nova and Temple Mage and make the matchups against Hunter and Zoo uh, a little bit easier. And that's a brilliant idea. It's just not one that I've seen in action at all. So I'm surprised. Like, yeah. I'd be curious to see if this season uh, of Ladder is going to maybe show us more of that style. Like, with a single Nova. Uh, could be kind mm -hmm. of interesting. I, yeah, I think you're always starting to see people really tech and weird stuff to try to beat the meta. And it also just really orients around really odd things in general. Like, for example, you see people go for Lightning Storm and Mech Shaman. I'm like, that doesn't even make sense based off your win yeah. condition. But a lot of people do that if they really feel like, you know, I like Mech Shaman, but there's too many people that are faster than me. Like, if I, there's hunters that I need to race against. Uh, and then they throw it in. You know, Flame Strike and Mech Mage. It doesn't make sense, but some people do that.
Yeah, well, it's one of those things where you go from face hunter to mu to mid range hunter to hybrid hunter. It's kind of like trying to mix in both styles, mm. and that's what people yeah. end up doing with every single deck. Oh boy, uh, Noxious! I'm looking at the coin and spells with early Flame Waker against yeah. a deck that has a lot of weak minions uh, health wise. That's yeah. pretty much the god drug for a mage at this point. Like you're just smiling yeah. inside. Is there a single mage deck that has a really awful matchup against Paladin though? That's kind of what I wonder. I feel like um, maybe Tempo Mage will lose to... I, I, this is again a god draw, so not the common scenario. Not the most common at least. It's not even that terrible of a draw either for Paladin. I mean, if you look at it, he curved out, which is one of the most important things. And he also has ways to really push for strong mid games. So say, you know, miraculously, all of these Flame Waker hits go to the face. That's a really powerful 2-1. Well, the half of the dream is real so far. Uh, the other half oh, died. <laughs> Never mind. Too bad. Rest in peace, dream. It's really All too right. bad. But the silence on the flame waker is pretty important because look at the other spells. You know, you would be able to push out a lot of damage onto the board and maybe even just kill him as soon as the Adrake hits the board. Yeah, but this is going to be a very tough board to contest for Bunny Muffins. Again, he's going to be hoping that he finds uh, what is the, you know what Jungbot is surprisingly useful here, even just as a dude killer. Yeah, you know, it's it's not the worst. I mean, you could always get like a a one one minion, like a like a wisp, and that that just ultimately gets punished. Um, so Junkbot, I, I don't really think there's any other mechs outside of the mechanical Yeti and the Clockwork Gnome in this deck, but right. there is even some synergy there too. Yeah, the synergy value of Junkbot. Are you gonna try to redefine the metagame? Is is that it, Frona? I've tried, man. But uh, I wasn't, I mean, my opponent wasn't the one eating junk, it was me after <laughs> eating. I was tried really hard to make something like that work with Rogue, because, yeah. you know, I had like Iron Sensei and Junk Bot and like a bunch of stuff buffing each other. It just, just wasn't meant to be. Well, you know what? This Junk Bot is going to do a lot of work here with the reversing switch. Oh man, he's going to be fed a bit of junk and then, I mean, eat up the Argent Squire. Yeah, now wow. this is basically the divine favor cross your fingers for. And there's only two of them in the deck. And Bunny Muffins has only drawn about eight cards. So it's a very low percentage. Uh, but he picks up <clears throat> a way to clear the board after he drops the juggler if he wants it. Yeah. He he's almost has to go for it. Knife juggler, consecration. You, if your opponent, um, like if you pick up a really small weak minion, juggler can even kill off with mirror entity, so you're not that concerned. But you're you're worried about your opponent having a significant drop here. Yeah. Well, instead, well, portal could give that. I mean, a five drop could be played for two, followed by well, that's gonna be a free. It's card purifier, just enough to be annoying. Yeah. And now it's like fourteen Hyper health. Brown? Is that is that a, is that a doable? I think so. If you draw two silver champion, that's eight damage. That's not good. It's been done, but. Mm. It's a stretch. Oh yeah, and of course the, the mirror entity as well, so it controls your board even more. Now, now you can just pretty much drop whatever you want. Antonitis is more than fine. Uh, Azure Drake plus Bing is okay too if you want to like deny any board control. Oh, Ooh, fine favor is good though. Equality would kill an Archmage. Oh, he's he's spamming. The BM is real. Okay, th like he's he's spamming a little too quickly here because yeah, I was gonna a say this is just this might just be. Well, actually, wait, that's twelve. Actually, yeah, he's gonna be two off lethal, and Arcane Golem, Blessing of Kings could just end the game if there's no mirror image here. Yeah, and how much damage does he have? He's got nine plus. I think. Okay, he's got twenty one, so he's two damage off. Yeah, he's two damage. That true server champion heal actually was meaningful. No, it became I, the exact game winning the, moment. The exact cards he needed. Never lucky, Stilo. Yeah, he's he definitely BM'd a little too early, and that's why you don't really go for it unless uh, unless unless it's guaranteed in the bag. It's just generally very good manners to do so. Uh, so Buddy Muffins will take this game, barring any disastrous, unforeseen plays here. And uh, he's going to take a 2-1 lead, but more importantly, he snuck out this win when his opponent had really good hand. Uh, yeah. He had to coin, Flame Waker, early spells, board control, and yet he's still able to win. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be the series here. Bunny Muffins taking it over Steelo. Best of three conquest with the ban means Bunny Muffins is going to get his first match win of the event so far. Uh, he's got to feel a little... I mean, I think that Divine Favor was just 
a sigh of relief for him. That was just yeah. way too clutch. Way too clutch. Yeah, absolutely. The draw is really dependent on um, your opponent playing a lot of cards too, and you, it's kind of unfortunate for um, for Stilo that he was drawing a lot of his heavier cards, like the Antonitis. Uh, you don't really need that to win. You just need the board to make sure you can continue to get repetitive damage in. So ultimately, uh, there's a really good start for Stilo, but when it didn't pan out, he ended up crashing and burning really hard. Yeah, the, as uh, you know, tempo mages tend to do against decks that pick up the board. So, uh, we'll be taking a short break here before moving on to the second match of the day. It's going to be Surrender, the South Korean player uh, that we spoke of a bit earlier, versus Yvonne, an ex, well, I mean, an MTG player who actually won, I believe, the Pro Tour this year, unless I'm mistaken. So, another oh, big awesome. Magic the Gathering name coming into Hearthstone. Going to be playing in against uh, one of the best players in this event so far. Uh, before we go out, I'd like to make a quick shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring the the event if you want to check them out squarespace.com slash deckmasters if you want to build a website and funny enough Rodan I did I did build a website and I'm starting oh, yeah? on it thank what you what kind squarespace. of website did you build I don't even know yet it's it's up oh, in the air. I've okay. got the domain it's a man secret got, project that's all it is I have no clue all right we'll be right back guys don't go anywhere we'll be uh just uh, around the corner <laughs> 